everyone, it's James here from Dark Arts Lockpicking. Hope you're all doing well. Pizza Locks, news for hacking, but as always, keeping your body legal. And yes, my shop is in a mess because I'm in the process of, as you know, doing those new cases. Um, but something a little bit funny. <sighs> I'm printing a massive <laughs> cutaway lock for our training. So we want to make it's easier and so people have a full-on visual representation even though we have slides in our presentation like for the slide oh, excuse me the slideshow and stuff like that um but an actual physical one that they can have a look at each part uh inside of a lock rather than just this clear ones and stuff like that so i'm actually 3d printing a huge cutaway i mean this thing is massive look at the size it's been going for uh, where are we? One day, one hour, and 15 minutes, and we're at 53%. Printed. I have printed another one, or I went to, start printing another one in Rainbow Silk PLA, but it had a massive delamination down here, and the whole lot just ended up with a giant body. Giant bird's nest. Because I did it overnight, you can see where it delaminated. So, redoing it again in black. Core will be yeah, in grey. And then I'll probably do like the pins. Because I'm going to do like a serrated, the TP, and the mushroom, the standard, so that people get a visual representation of them. Um, I'll probably do them in like different colours or something like that. Um, and it will have a working key as well. So, the only thing is, I now have to go for a trip to Bunnings and buy some thin wire because of the size of these holes which are big enough to fit my finger in uh, I don't have springs that big and I don't know where I'm going to get springs that big that will be able to be moved by the plastic pins and stuff so I'm thinking if I get some wire some thin gauge wire and I wrap it around something uh, a little bit about the same diameter as that hole there maybe a little bit smaller and make up my own looking spring spring looking things uh it'll give a representation of the springs in the lock anyway but it's going to be such a great training aid to actually visually demonstrate how the workings of a lock are and when i was trying to explain to people what security pins were like and stuff like that even though they're in our book which we're adding way more stuff to as well um a lot more information into our book to put into a full-on like class format kind of work through um so it has everything that people need to know for physical entry methods um, but non-destructively. But, um, you know, it's got a couple of pictures of pins in there, but to actually have a fully looking... So when I explain to them about false set, when I explain to them how it clicks on a serrated pin with each one, you've got to determine which one is actually the correct height. All that we can actually visually show them and demonstrate with this cutaway. And, of course, you know, knowing me, I scaled it up 200% <laughs> to the original one, so it's a lot bigger, um to be able to, you know, demonstrate to 200 people. But, yeah, it's going to be great once it's all done, fingers crossed. So now I've got to go to Bunnings. I've got to get um, some wire for that and a few other bits and pieces. So, yeah, thought I'd give you a little heads up. We'll have a look at it once it's all done. But, um, yeah, I've got to go for a trip now, so we'll see you all soon. All right. So back from Bunnings, I ended up buying another one of these cases, the uh, technician's case. Because I do like the design of this. Only so this one could be for all the bypassing locks and tools and stuff like that for training. And then this one, whatever I decide to put in it. Print is still going. Um, one day, three hours and 44 minutes now. 63%. But I kind of... Just put my finger in the way. Um, when, in, when I was in Bunnings, so I was looking for some wire and stuff. Then I... Going through the lock section to begin with, because for some reason I will go straight to the locks. And I come across these. These are springs. So I'm hoping I should have did have scissors somewhere here. Now what am I on about? I've got scissors connected to me. Pocket. My belt. Um, I'm kind of hoping that these, I went to one Bunnings, we've got two Bunnings here, one across one side of town, one right across the other side of town. So, 
I went to one Bunnings and I only had two packets and they're only two in each. And I'm like, damn it, there's five pin chambers. <laughs> what do I want to do? Do I have to go all the way across the other Bunnings? But I'm hoping these, even if they're a little bit too long, um, which they probably will be, if I can trim them down a little bit and have these because these are softer springs, it should work. And they should fit. Oh, look at that, like it was made for it. Perfect. I'm happy with that. So once that's finished printing, we can have a look at these. And after I remove all the uh, supports. All right, a little quick update for you. So it's still printing. We've been going for one day, eight hours and 36 minutes. On here. This has to be literally the... I've printed some tall stuff before, but skinny. This has to be the biggest print I have done so far. Um, this thing is going to be huge. But, bloody awesome. And the thing I'm actually really excited about, not putting all this together once all the other bits all printed and probably your cool, it's good to go. But, one of the things I'm actually really excited about doing is uh, removing the supports. This is always satisfying to remove supports. But be very careful that I don't break anything. But, uh, yeah, a little update for you. Is hopefully it'll be finished uh, sometime this century. Alright, it's now like gone 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I forgot to put my watch on charge. Uh, it's gone 1 o'clock in the morning. And it is finally done after one day, 14 hours, and 32 minutes of printing. Now I get the uh, oh-so-satisfying and scary moment. Bill plate's still warm. It doesn't want to come off. Um, of removing all these supports because I'm worried that I'm going to maybe possibly break something. Hopefully not. Um, first thing is I'm going to try and get off this bill plate, which I'm not going to do with one hand. But yeah, get to remove all these supports and then start printing the rest of it. But I went through probably just over half a roll of filament on this one print. Biggest print so far. But um, yeah, once all the sports are all removed, I'll come back and show you. All right, so what a day. <laughs> um, early calling this morning to work, to get into a room that the key wouldn't work for. So under the tool that <clears throat> in. Uh, but I removed all the supports from the body of the giant cutaway lock that we are doing. Um, and I'm now in the process, I've got the cap for it. So I kept the cap from the failed print. I was doing one in rainbow silk PLA and it delaminated, as you know. But I kept the cap because I reckon that in here looks pretty bloody sweet. And I reckon it's going to be pretty cool once all the other bits in it. So I finally upscaled all the G codes and the designs. So I've got it over here going at the moment. So I'm printing the core, which is going to take about 14 hours. It's at 32%. And it's been going for 4 hours and 20 minutes. Uh, and the circlet for the back. So I'm printing, printing them off. Again, I'm going to have a heap of supports to remove from that because it's a cutaway. It's got overhangs and stuff like that, and it's been done. Then I'm going to print all the parts in different colours to really be able to explain what parts are what. So I'm thinking I've got some gold silk PLA down there. I'm going to print the driver, the key pins in that. All the key pins will be in gold. Then I've got a spool, a mushroom, a standard, a serrated, and a T-pin to print, which are going to be in different colours. And then I've got the key itself, which, again, will be in well, a colour, whatever I decide to put it in. Um, and then we're going to have a fully functioning giant, I mean, this thing is pretty bloody big, cutaway 3D printed lock. Um, there's a lot of hours going to be put into this, and a lot of filament. I mean... That was pretty much almost a full black roll, and I went through about half, just over half. 
um, the filament, so quite a lot of filament uh, for that. But hopefully it's going to be worth it. And of course the springs that I purchased that are sitting over on top of this printer. These bad boys, they fit in perfectly. Like that. So they're going to fit. The only thing is, they're a wee bit too long. So I'm going to have to cut the springs back about, no, just over half. Um, so there's enough springs sitting down that you can see it, but it's not going to be too much. So I'll get rid around to doing that. Once I get all these other bits and pieces printed out, which is probably going to take me a whole week or another three days to get every single part printed out, all the supports removed, cleaned up, painted with some clear coat to help protect it because it's going to be wear and tear. Um, just adds a little extra layer to it. And then we can have a look at the fully put together, working, functioning, hopefully functioning, cutaway, giant 3D printed lock for our training and presentations. So, yeah, I'll see you in a couple of days when it's all done. Good everyone, it's James here from Dark Arts Lockpicking. Hope you're all doing well. Peace, Watch, doing some hacking, but as always, keeping it bloody legal. And it's finally finished. I was just taking a break from doing some work, making up some Viking bands. And I uh, thought I'd actually bring you the final product since I've had it sitting on the side here, all finished up for a couple of weeks now, and I haven't had a chance to actually finish off the video for it. But the giant cutaway lock for our training. It is finished. This thing is a beast. Uh, it took quite a bit of sanding to get it all working nice and smooth. I also put a bit of spray paint on the front just to help protect it a little bit. I clear coated some of the plastic and stuff like that as well. But we've got a nice selection of security pins. We've got all of our key pins in there. And she works nice and smooth. Springs worked out perfect, the ones that I bought from Bunnings. I had to trim them down. They were a bit too long, so I did have to cut them down quite a bit um, in order for them to be able to work with the key nice and smoothly. But I'll tell you what, this thing took a lot of work, a lot of printing, a hell of a lot of printing, uh, a couple of days of printing continuously to get this all done. And then a lot of sanding, a lot of supports to remove and clean up. But as you can see, she works with the key and we can actually take the key out. Like that, nice and smooth. And I mean, come on, in comparison, this key compared to a normal key. Like, <laughs> the size comparison is nothing. Like, it's huge. There's no comparison in size, it's just massive. Um, but at least we have a working key, so we can actually demonstrate to people in a bigger concept, in a bigger way of how a lock actually interacts. We've got our core, we've got our Bible, we've got all of our chambers that are drilled out, our different types of pins. We have a standard, a spool, a serrated pin, a mushroom, and a T-pin, and then all of our key pins down the bottom in gold. And I made that look a bit more like metal. I sprayed it with some chrome that I actually sprayed on the front as well. I clear coated the front. But I then sanded it right back so some of the chrome stuck in and it made it look like a little bit like brushed metal. Let me bring it up nice and close so you can actually see. I'll come around. So you can kind of see it made it out to look a little bit like brushed metal in a way to make it look more like a core. But oh, then that's the only downside when the key's not in there. The springs, you can see, sit lower. Um, so anyway, they get to the work. But we can see our keyway in front of our lock which for some reason, it printed a bit funny. You can actually see some of the prints here, but that doesn't matter. But in order to be able to explain to people how the pins interact and how they work, it makes it a lot easier to have something so big in order to show them all the parts. And we can actually take the, the pins out. So if somebody says, oh, you know, what exactly does a spool pin look like? You know, well, we can actually take it out so they can... Look and have a play with it. Feel what it feels like. See what it looks like. 
and we can just pop it back in and we can take out the pins and explain how you know we can take out the all the driver pins but one end at a time and just show them how they interact inside of a core now the only thing is daryl said i should print a massive lock pick and tension wrench in order to show people how to pick a lock using this as well so that is on the uh drawing board i've got to get around to doing that i just have not had a chance uh, with the amount of work and everything else that has been going on lately but she works nice and smooth you can slide her key in like that and then boom we can turn it and people can see an actual cutaway lock a massive massive cutaway lock but Anyway, there we go. The massive 3D printed cutaway for our training classes. This is going to go into a case, a hard case, in order for us to take it to our classes. And if we get this other one in Melbourne, this is definitely going to come in handy down there so that people can have a full-on look, a really large look at the pins, the core, and everything that's inside of a lock. Um, I mean, great. the cutaways are great the other training ones, but they're a lot, lot smaller and pins are really small and they get lost easily. Whereas something huge like this gives us such an advantage when it comes to teaching and training, it's not funny. It's a great, great way to explain the insides of a lock and how they all work and interact. So anyway, there we go. Let us know in the comments down below. What do you think of the process? What do you think of the lock? You know, if I, if I could get make these a lot easier than the amount of work it takes i mean it took me a couple of weeks to get this one done a couple of weeks um i probably would have put them up on the website but they're just going to be if i did it's going to cost way too much no one's going to pay the amount of money that it would actually cost for the amount of time put into removing all the supports cleaning it all up sanding it all back clear coating it all making sure it's all interacting and working all the different colors and Everything like that. It just takes a lot of work. It really does. Uh, I didn't think I was actually going to get this finished with how big it was. But anyway, she looks pretty bloody cool. I have to admit, I really do like it. And um, can't wait to actually include this in our classes and in our training. So anyway, let us know in the, say in the comments down below what you think. I might do some videos up on the YouTube channel here on this lock and explain a few things for beginners and stuff like that. If people are interested, but anyway, if you like what you see, please give that thumbs up. Really do bloody appreciate it. Don't forget to make sure that you are subscribed and turn the notification bell on. That way you stay up to date. As soon as you upload a video, you'll be one of the first to know. We're going to be doing a lot more giveaways as well. I've got plenty of stuff to give away. Trust me. Plenty of stuff. So stay tuned for that. You must be a subscriber in order to win giveaways. And uh yeah. Remember to keep it bloody legal, check out all links in the description. And until next time. Cheers guys. And uh, now to put this away in its case.